One of my all-time favorite things about this job here at Mansoing is trying to stay one project ahead of all of you in my creative process. I was at a quilt show recently and I saw this awesome landscape quilt that actually had 3D flowers hanging around on it. And I thought, you know what? I gotta figure out how to do this. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm bragging a little bit. My first attempt at making my first 3D flower actually turned out pretty darn good. I'm gonna walk you through building this. We're actually gonna add an extra petal or two on the outside just because we can. And a lot of that's based on the way we organize our fabrics. All you really need for this kind of project, really, let's start with how we're gonna cut these. Now, the reason I got jazzed about this is the Missouri Star Quilt Company came out with their mini orange pill. Is that not the cutest little template you've ever seen, right? So we're actually using the, the standard for the outside leaves and we're using the mini for the inside leaves. And if you don't have the templates, we also have a printable that you can just bounce down in the description below. You can print this out. And if you need any of the supplies like the templates or this awesome batik bundle from Robert Kaufman, those are right there for you as well. So this is leaflet and it's an artisan batik. Um, five inch square pack and I used almost all of the colors so let's just start unpacking this stuff and just get right into it because I am so wound up about showing you how to do this. Now as we go through here we're not going to really need these yellows so let's just take a second and set these aside for something else. I'm going to cut these in big stacks of about four or five pieces at a time and if I can show you real quick one of the petals we're going to make here you can see that there's two colors of fabric so kind of a light side and a dark side and if we need there so I'm going to stack my fabrics up as lights and darks as I go so I'm going to use most all of my greens and blues like this and so let me show you what I mean by a dark side and a light side so I'm going to take this here put one two here's another dark here's another light and this way once I've cut them they're right in order let me show you here Here's one of my cut pieces, and it's right in order to be stitched together. But I'm going to show you how to cut them first after we get organized, right? So we're going to put our fabrics like that for our yellows and greens and our blues. For our purples, we actually want to set two of them aside. One of those two purples is going to be the inside here. And as I said, this is the original, the prototype flower. And so I use blue around the outside here, but I'm saving a purple for that as well because we can. So I'm going to take one of my purples out of there and one of the other shades, set that aside, and then I'm going to go through my pinks and purples, and I'm also going to stack those up just the same, and we're going to cut some of those. So let's just do a couple of our pinks real quick, and I don't recommend trying to cut through any more than about five pieces of fabric at once, and let me show you how we're going to do this, okay? I promised we would start with our big template, so let's just do that. Now. The big template fits your five inch pre-cut package really nicely. And I'm using a Lazy Susan cutting mat to make my life even easier here. And I'm gonna grab my big rotary cutter out of the Somando vest. And for something like this, I'm gonna go ahead and line it up so that it's easy for me to cut. I'm gonna keep my finger applying pressure down on my template. And I'm coming all the way to this edge and I'm rolling through. And I'm thinking to myself right now, I didn't check to see if my blade was sharp. It was. That's a good thing. You want to make sure your blade's sharp while you're doing this as well because of all the layers you're cutting through. And do be careful not to hit the edge of your template because that'll nick that sharp blade and make it so it's not a sharp blade anymore. But didn't that work out nice there? Look at that. Okay, so that's as easy as that to cut your big pieces. Super simple. Let me show you how to cut your small pieces. There's a little bit more involved because look how small they are. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so let's take that stack of pinks we had here. And I wanna make sure they're somewhat organized. Doesn't have to be perfect. And what I learned to make my life easy is we're gonna make one slice here and then we're gonna do one, two, three slices. We're getting four actual chunks out of one of our little five inch squares so that I don't make any mistakes. I line this up here and I'm just gonna visually cut it as a straight line across there, set that aside. And now we're gonna cut one of these. And the smaller the template, the more pressure I'm actually putting because I wanna make sure I don't cut into my fingers at all. 
rotate this here. And because we're not actually piecing this all into a quilt, if you had one or two of your pieces not cut perfectly, you know what? It's no problem at all because each one of these is kind of an individualized petal for us. Let me trim all of this up, trim all of this up. And there you can see I've got ton of petals already cut nice and easy. Now, I've been playing with this and you might want to look over here and see that I've got all of my pieces ready to go, but just a few. I want to show you real quickly how to sew these together and how to go ahead and put the wires in. So I've got a couple that I actually need to finish so we can build our flower at the end of the video here. So I'm just going to take all of this real quick and set it aside for us. So it's not in our way. Now let's build our big flower first and my thread colors will be important down the road. So I'm just going to mention right now when I'm sewing on the green, I've got green thread in the bobbin and in the needle. And when I'm sewing on the pink, I'll have pink thread in the bobbin and the needle. And right now I'm going to start stitching right here. I'm going to call that about three quarters of an inch up from this bottom seam right here. We're gonna leave this bottom area open because we need to be able to turn these right sides out. I've got two layers of my batik. I've got one blue, one green. I'm starting up here to do a quarter inch seam about, like I said, three quarters of an inch up. And I do recommend we also backstitch because we're gonna be pulling on this edge. And now we're just gonna stitch nicely around. Now, as I head to the top corner, I'm actually not necessarily going to stay right along the edge. I want more of a point. So I'm coming up and I'm going to start to cheat to a point and then I'm going to stop with my needle down and I'm going to come straight back down there. So not quite the square tip on this. And then as I come down, I'm also thinking I need to make sure I stop with enough room to turn this right sides back out. Okay, I'm going to back stitch again. Love my thread cutter there. And it is all sealed up, okay? Now, there's a couple of really easy ways to turn these. Even the small ones turn nicely. You can either just pull on both edges of the fabric. Oops, I should do it up near the top and then start to push. From that point, you can take something like a purple thing and you could just push the tip right up through. With these smaller ones, I actually either use tweezers to do that or my favorite are the forceps, the forceps you can actually reach in and grab and then pull back. As I'm working this, I'm using that purple thing to smooth out the interior seam. Okay, and I'm just checking to make sure my iron's nice and ready to go over here because we're gonna wanna press this before we insert the wire. So I mentioned we're using the templates. I mentioned we're using the Artisan Batik leaflet color packet. And I didn't mention we're using a 24 gauge floral wire. That 24 gauge floral wire is pretty darn fine. I'll lay it right there so you can see it. The reason you use floral wire is it's coated so it won't rust in your fabric over time and soil your fabric. Now, when I purchased these, I actually got them. They're 18 inch long sticks like this. And I prefer the straight stick instead of the wrapped on a, a ball of wire because I want them fairly straight when I'm starting. So we're gonna cut some of them down in half. We'll get right to that. First, we need to press out this, this leaf petal though. And for the leaf petal, we do. We want one 18 inch stick of wire and we want one nine inch stick of wire. And if you're not sure how to make an 18 into two nines, there's a needle nose plier uh, demonstration we could work on for the future. Just cut that in half with pliers. It doesn't have to be perfectly accurate. Okay, now I'm just goofing off today. I'm super, like I said, I'm super excited because I feel like I, I've just won the lottery here in creating these 3D flowers. Now, I'm gonna find what is roughly center with my wire and I'm gonna do about a 90 degree bend like that. Okay, and the reason I want a 90 degree bend is that's gonna fit up in the tip, but I wanna be able to work the teardrop shape in my advantage. So I've got that little bend, and now we're gonna slide this, let me see if I can do it, into the tube. And we're gonna to top stitch. This is why we want the green thread for the top and the bottom. And I made a real intentional decision. I'm always sewing, looking at the lightest piece of fabric when I'm stitching, so that my top stitching 
And when the flower is all assembled is on the light fabrics because the light fabrics are the top of the petals and the darks are the bottom. Now this trick I learned, and I think it works pretty darn good, I'm gonna try to go slow to show you the inserting of the edge wires and the stem up the center wires. Now I'm starting back much closer to about a quarter inch seam allowance and I wanna caution all of you, be incredibly careful not to hit the wire with your needle. If you're lucky and you hit the wire with the needle, you'll break the wire. If you're unlucky like I was once, you'll put the wire in your sewing machine, which could be very damaging. You don't have to sew right next to the wire. You can give yourself a few threads distance. So just, if the first one will, will take a little bit of effort, that from there on it's gonna be real easy. So here's this trick. If you can look behind my sewing machine, I'm pushing the wire into the seam allowance. And once it's pushing into the seam allowance, it's bending along this edge here really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple stitches. And I'm going real slow. And you can see by the width of the stitch, it's roughly that quarter inch still. And this is top stitching, so you want it to be as pretty as possible. But I'm not putting my needle right next to the wire. I'm also using my first finger on my left hand to make sure the wire is staying along the seam allowances of where the two pieces of batik were stitched together. And this push on the back end of the wire is really helpful. You've got a bunch of these to do though. I might almost suggest wearing a thimble or something. At the end of my first day, I'd poked myself a couple of good times and I had a few band-aids on. Okay, we're stopping at the corner. And from the corner, we're gonna lift our presser foot and rotate here. And you can see that seam allowance. It's close, but it's not right on top of the wire. Just point that out again. And now as I come into this other side, I'm pushing this wire over here and that's causing it to line up along the edge. I wanna make sure it's right where I want it. And here we go. Let the feed dogs do the work for us. And I'm just worrying about the wire. Now, as I approach the bottom of the big petal, or maybe we'll call this the leaf and the pink ones and the purple ones we'll call the petals. We're gonna put a stem or a vein up the center of this one. We're not doing it on the small ones. They're just too small, we don't need it. So at this point where I'm almost to that opening, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna rotate the leaf one more time and now I'm gonna do a straight line up to the top of the leaf. This is one side of the casing now for the wire that forms the vein up the center. Coming to the top point and I'm stopping. Now I'm gonna rotate, check this out. I think this is pretty darn cool. I'm gonna take about five or six stitches from the top and I'm trying to get away from that first row of stitching by roughly a quarter inch again, maybe quarter inch is too big. Okay, so now what we're gonna need is that half piece, the little nine inch wire. And of course you could sew this all in advance, but what I like to do is I like to slip the wire up right along that seam allowance. And this way I can try to trap the wire as close as possible. And so I have a feel for that, that gap. And your wire is about the width of a needle if you need some sort of visual reference. And now we're just gonna run down the side of it. If this makes you nervous, you don't have to sew it with the wire in. You can always insert the wire later. If you're hearing that ticking noise, that means I'm running my needle right across the wire. I'm a little close, so I'm moving out a ways. And now as I come down to the bottom, my trick is I start to head back up the seam that I started on the outer edge first so that I can tie off cut my threads, and now this little leaf is basically finished. We are gonna leave that edge open at the end. It's not gonna be a problem. It's gonna get hidden when we tie off. And now what I like to do is I like to give like one little twist where I grab all three of my wires down here low, kind of pinch and twist the flower, and then I can straighten it back out. And what that does is it just bonded all the wires together so that I can shape it. And by having that stem in the middle, I can do all kinds of different things like that that makes it really cool, okay? Now, once we have all of our petals made, and like I said, we're making five for the upgrade flower from the prototype, and we have about, let me see, I think I have about 20 or 24 of the purple, some light, some dark. I have eight of the pink ones, and we're gonna start right here in the middle assembling. Okay, as we get ready for our assembly, I'm gonna go through and take at least four of my leaves, and I've, I've pointed out earlier, I believe, that we want our light side of our petals up, so I'm gonna kinda bend these back. 
so the light parts are pointing up. We can shape all of this when it's done. We're not really worrying about our shape. Then I'm gonna make sure I have one of my 18 inch pieces of the floral wire, and I'm gonna take and make a bend that's about as long as those other wires. We're trying to avoid getting a bunch of bulk that builds up in this part down here because there's gonna be a lot of little loose ends. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna take this first wire the loose wire, and I'm gonna put it in my grouping. And now I'm gonna grab in these four petals first, like this, and I'm gonna take and I'm gonna wrap it one time, maybe twice, with my floral wire so now I can just hang on and let that be. So now my hands aren't monkeying around so much. Now, if you really want, we can come in and look, I'm gonna to try to take it so that my stitch line right there comes in below the petals so that I start to hide up the seam allowance. And now I'm gonna make sure I get the other new petals that are coming in, in between the ones that were already there, like this, okay? And now I'm gonna take another loop with that. And let me show you down here, I'm really trying to make sure that I have that right around where the fabric, the loose ends of the fabric is coming in, okay? If you feel like any of your petals are out of place at this point, you might want to organize them a little bit because now we're going to go on to the light purple. So we're going to have the light purple ones and then our dark purple ones. And we're going to just start building around the flower as we go using about four petals at a time on opposite sides of the flower. Grabbing it down here and then taking that wire again and getting myself a nice wrap to secure. And we're just gonna build and build and build till we get all the way out to the outer petals. And I'll show you how to do that after the, ca the caffeine slows down a little bit. Okay, so we've got all of the lighter purple petals around the outside here. Now, if you were getting concerned because you really love the way this wire is working down here, we could get another piece of wire going. We probably should. And we'll just do that same kind of thing. We're gonna bend it and keep it up in the top. So let's take this wire real quick and finish this off, keeping that all together like that, okay? We're gonna incorporate this next one in here. You could even slide it through one of those pieces if you needed. There. Now we're bringing in the darker petals and those are going to lay on the same way. And again, I find it's easiest to handle about four of them at a time. All right. Once we have all of the petals on and before we get the leaves on, Let's go ahead and take a little bit of time to start to organize some of these because once I put the leaves on, it's gonna to help to really secure. So I'm just gonna work my way around like any good florist would do and make sure my bouquet is beautiful. I'm pushing the purple ones down and I'll be pulling the pink ones in like this to give it some extra character and so we can actually hide that center. So I start working around and that way I can make sure you can hopefully see some of the dark ones versus the light ones. And that way I can shift petals around if necessary. Make it look just the way I want. Okay, now with these bigger leaves, again, you've got the three wires in there and I've kind of pre-twisted these as well. So they stay nice together and I want the lighter side up, but I'm taking the time before I try to put them into place to bend them back and I'm coming down almost an inch because I want those to really cover up a lot of the wire we've already been wrapping. So I'm just making sure, and that is, I want my darker green instead of my blue up. And that also helps me get it in my hand nice. Make sure all my wires are secure. And then once we get this, we just do a real easy wrap around the base to finish it off. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna try to grab all of these at once and I'm setting them in, but what I'm setting them down here is their job is to cover up that green wire. So I wanna bring that wire down as I start to work my way around, let's make sure we get one of the dark ones kind of sectioned in there. And then here's our last leaf. And you can see that that's really cool with five instead of four. And you have plenty of fabric in your packet for that. 
Now I'm tying these in really nice and secure. And at this point, we have a couple of options for the base. All of this wire down here can be twisted together if you want a really nice and long stem, something you want to put into a bouquet or something you want to put into a vase with some cool like marbles or something like that. Okay, or you could also take at the moment, like I'm going to try to do, just for ease, and I'm going to cut some of these off. Now, most pliers won't cut through all of those layers at once, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this in my trash can in case it doesn't work real good, and you can't see it. And that way they all fall onto the ground. Just kind of got to nibble through or get yourself a bigger pair of pliers, and we'll probably edit this out, because you all say you love the human moments, but you don't want to see me struggle this long. Okay, with a little bit of work and nibble, you can see, but be careful, those are really sharp down there now. Okay, that's one of the reasons we're gonna cover it with our fabric. We can reorganize these later. Let's get the hard work done first, which is finishing this off. So we're gonna take, simply take one of these, and if you want to audition, you're welcome to. One of these is gonna go just like this into the center as we put our pink together. Okay, the other one is gonna wrap around the base. It's already been pinked and it's a batik, so it's not gonna really unravel, but I'm doing kind of a, I don't know if you wanna call that a two thirds fold. I'm gonna hit it with my iron real quick to lock it down. Okay, now once this is pressed, I'm gonna put this inner small piece that's folded in to the stem. I'm gonna take my lapel stick and I'm gonna hit both the flower itself and that purple batik. Then I'm gonna take this here and I'm gonna to start to wrap it. And then after I get all the way around once, I can fold this edge up inside. And now we're losing almost all of our raw edge. And now we can come around and I'm pulling it fairly taut. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a bunch of lapel stick Nice and gooey like that to hold. And I'm gonna bring it around and it will literally just stay like that and it will hold. Now, if you were concerned, you could put a clamp on there, you could put some blue tape around there, you could put a pin in there, but I found it was unnecessary. And what that does is it seals the bottom. You can see how nice that looks, as well as it also makes it safe to handle. So after my lapel stick is dried a bit, I can come back in here and really begin to organize my petals. You can pull them apart if you need and put a little bend to them. You could even bend a tip down. They're very secure to work with, right? organize as we go. You've got your piece of fabric in the center and I am just so excited with the way this turned out. And like I said, I want to remind you, the very first time I saw 3D flowers, they were connected to an awesome quilt as well. So these are great stash burners, a fun way to play in the three dimension. If you had never worked with floral wire before, I hope there were some good tips. Hey, as a matter of fact, all of you fans out there are great with your comments. I know someone out there knows more about 3D flowers than I do. So why don't you help us all out this week? Put your tips and techniques in the comments below. We'll all read them and we'll see you next time here at Man Sewing. Mm -hmm.